Welcome everyone to the Co-Creators Convergence Thursday Night Creator Convos. I'm Noelle Marshall and I'm here with my beloved. Good evening everyone in the universe listening to this. Join us in this conversation. Great to have you back with us, Jean. Thank you for hosting her, Leanne. It's going to be a wonderful evening. And I'll say it is going to be a wonderful evening. Uh, Leanne is, is back with us again, bringing her friend Jean by popular demand. It's going to be a very interesting evening. So uh, stay tuned. And I'm just going to tell you, you can turn off your videos. Please mute yourself because what's going to happen is they're going to... Um, bring in a meditation, they'll have conversation, and then at the end they'll invite us in. So um, you can just relax and soak in all that sound that's going to raise our, our mass consciousness. So mm. I'm really excited about that. So before we begin, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the Co-Creators Convergence. So please stand by. Welcome everyone, my good friend Leanne Heltzel and my friend Jean White Eagle Pearson. It's uh, really great to have you back and I know it's going to be a very exciting evening. But before I turn it over to you, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Leanne and she will be our super host for the night and she will introduce her friend Jean. So Leanne was born a creative empath. She is most comfortable unearthing her next grandest adventure exploring what is possible within the capabilities of human potential and integrating those qualities into practical applications. To Leanne, creativity and imagination are gateways into higher consciousness and are the cornerstones of her work. Leanne merges tangible cosmic frequencies in abstract paintings, big, huge paintings, um, and, and she's here to serve the evolution of humanity. So I'm going to turn it over to my two beloved friends here and um, stay tuned. Just relax, listen, have your vibrations uplifted, and we will have conversation at the end. So thank you again, everyone, for coming. And one final thing, if you have not come to our conversations before and you're interested in getting our monthly newsletter. You can see I just put the, the June uh, conversation list up in our video. Um, just put your email in the chat and I will add you to our uh, MailChimp list. So thank you all, one and all. Thank you, Leanne, Jean. I'm looking forward to this. Thank you, Noelle. I think before we begin, let's just take a few minutes and do a centering and just all enter into this space together. So if everybody can just close your eyes 
and take a nice deep breath in and out. And if you're able to do so, just kind of move around a little bit in your seat and just really sense into and feel how your body is sitting in the chair or on the couch, wherever you are. And just really being one with your body and this liminal space that we're in all together, as well as this the physical space of where you sit in your room. So we'll take a deep breath in, breathing in love and grace and joy and breathing out all the stress and worries that may have been around you today. And breathing in again, light and lightness and the joy of everything we're going to experience tonight. And now release that. And when you're ready, we'll just come into the space and we'll get started because we have a lot to talk about tonight. <laughs> so let me give a little introduction of our beloved Jean. I just adore you. Jean <laughs> is a visionary, educator, author, and speaker. She's co-founder and president of the Interstellar Community Foundation, a nonprofit established for the purpose of manifesting interstellar universities and surrounding communities around the world. And Jean sees this as a system that, whose objective is to maximize and sustain the highest human potential and the eventual overt interaction with us extraterrestrials and non-human intelligence. Jean is an author and co-author of books dealing with human relations and the future of humanity of life on Earth. She's a member of the Evolutionary Leaders Organization founded by futurist Barbara Marks Hubbard. And Jean's background also includes many years of working with children and teens at risk and is the visionary for the global ceremonial dance for the one whose purpose is to help remove walls of separation and promote global healing. She's an accomplished composer and musician with a degree in the performing arts and master study in education. Welcome so much, Jean. It's so wonderful to be here again with CCC. Thank you, Leanne. And I also want to thank Bob and Noel because uh, you guys, what you what you do every Thursday is so important. Um, I can feel Barbara Marks Hubbard now. She quite often will show up behind me and I can hear her laugh. Um, for any of you who knew Barbara, she loved to laugh. Um, but she was an extraordinary visionary and has for quite some time now been a real inspiration. Uh, but I also want to thank you, Leanne, for your courage to walk through this conversation with me. And I want to thank my husband, John Pearson, who's on the call, by the way, who uh, has this extraordinary ability to answer questions in the chat when I can't get to them. So uh, just letting you know that he's here. So let's jump into this, Leanne. Yeah, the topic tonight is so fascinating because you're you have so much to to speak to around the power of sound and how the power of sound is we're able to to increase the frequency and the vibration and affect all of humanity. So that's the topic tonight and we'll start there. I would love to to just hear your perspective when you talk about sound. Well, um, here's, uh, I'm not a physicist, uh, but I may use some terms tonight that fall into that category. Uh, the truth is, is everything that we perceive to exist is sound. Uh, it doesn't make any difference what it is. A thought, a speck of dust, um, uh, a feeling, uh, it can be something tangible like a candle, fire, tree, whatever you can possibly name is sound, it's frequency. Um, when John and I were in Australia so many years ago, the Aborigines said, what, what we do is we sing ourselves into existence. And so, you know, the, the candle is singing itself into existence. The chair is singing itself into existence. 
the speck of dust is singing itself into existence. And what's so cool about that is there is no separation. It's all a reflection of the, the consciousness, the one, the one uh, of which each of us is a part um, or a reflection. We're a reflection of the whole. But it's kind of cool because uh, everything is sound. And if you will allow yourself to be in that, that perspective or see from that perspective, then it's possible that you may begin to experience everything around you is singing. Uh, <laughs> everything around you is a song. Uh, everything around you, within you, outside, within is sound. You yourself are a song singing yourself into existence. I mean, it sounds kind of poetic, but there's um, this, this is the bottom line of who and what we are. All of consciousness is a song. It's sound. <laughs> so how can we use sound to raise consciousness? Well, I think the first thing... Um, I think John would probably agree with me on uh, in Native American terms, we have a, um, a phrase that we say clearing the hollow bone. And what that means is, is if there is anything within us that we are carrying, whether it's anger or um, uh, a past event, a past circumstance, uh, if we have experienced abuse in any way, if we have experienced disease in any way that we've not been able to get through, if we are experiencing uh, the passing of a relative or a friend uh, and are not able to get through the, the, the sadness of it, all of this gets inside the, the energy of it, gets inside the cellular structure of who each of us is. And so it it's... The clearing of this is really crucial because when we do clear, then what we are able to do is we become more fully aware of all that is around us and we begin to realize there's no separation between me and the table, between me and the chair, between me and the tree, between me and an animal, between me and another person. And when I'm able to see from an experience from that perspective, then if I become still, I can begin to experience the frequency that actually is the form of, of another person or the form of, of a tree, whatever it happens to be. And then we can begin to be in concert with that, we with all that we're experiencing around us. Now, if you take that on out and you begin to look, all right, let's look at a planet and let's look at all the life forms that are on this planet. And you come to the realization that every it doesn't matter who or what it is, it's all frequency, it's all sound. And if we can clear ourselves, we ourselves are able to um, not only live in a higher frequency, we begin to emit the sound, the very presence of who we are. And I can sing and you can sing and we can, you know, music, which everything is music, right? But what is so beautiful about all of this is you begin to realize that if you are moving in that high frequency space, that begins to affect any and everything around you. If anything is moving at a lower frequency, what's interesting is, and this is the little bit of physics that I'll just bring in, and I'll use layman's terms, so I ask forgiveness for many physicists that may be out there, um, is that when you are moving in that high frequency space, something comes in that's moving in a low frequency. The one that gets affected is the one moving in the low frequency. Uh, the, the higher frequency will touch it and begin to raise it. 
uh, it's almost, here's another way to say it, I guess. It's a simplistic way, but everything is love. I mean, let's just, let's just look at it from that premise. So that that is moving at a higher frequency is love that remembers itself. That which is moving at a lower frequency is love that may have forgotten itself. And all that we do when we're truly moving in that higher vibrational space, each one of us, we're helping the other part of us that has forgotten that it's also love. And this is actually how I healed cancer. And I've had cancer twice. And this is exactly how I healed from cancer, as I knew the cancer was moving at a lower frequency, but I also knew that my own consciousness was clearing and, and moving in a place of a high vibrational field. And long story short, uh, it didn't take very long for the cancer began, it began to respond and it began to transmute, it began to change. And before I knew it, it had trans transmuted. And I didn't have that, that separation, that disease, that, that pulling apart within me. I had come back into that place of oneness within myself. I hope that's not confusing. Uh, and I'm sure if any of you have questions, you can ask them just a little bit later when we have question and answer, but. Right. Because I'm glad you brought that up. Those lower, that example, right. Of the cancer cells being that lower vibration. Cause you had mentioned to me, like um, the military has used sonar. Like there's, there's ways that sound has been used against us. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, that's not a happy thought. Uh, but what's, what is a happy thought is that that kind of use of it is also moving at that lower frequency. When you bring in the frequency of love, and this is not Mammy Pamby stuff. This is not woo woo stuff. This is the most powerful frequency that you can bring into anything because it's already there is the frequency of love. And, um, an well, I'll use an example of my cancer. I can remember at one point, um, one of my healthy cells just surrounding a cancer cell and just loving it. And the cancer cell was just doing that on the, this is what, this is what I'm seeing in my mind's eye. And the cancer cell is just fighting back and the, and the healthy cell is just holding it in love until finally the cancer cell has no more energy to fight or, or to, you know, to fight. Yes, to fight. And it begins to relax and it begins to fall into the arms. And what's happening, it's beginning to change in frequency. Um, yeah. So. Because you had mentioned to me a, the story of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think one of the first experiences I had, this is what, I'm um, 79 right now. And as Barbara used to say, I'm growing um, newer every day. But I can remember when I was in my mid-30s and I'm coming home from my work at the time. And it's rush hour. I'm in the car and I'm behind a car, a, a truck that was making a, a terrible noise. And it was loud and it was obnoxious. And I thought, you know, what, what, what am I do here? Because I couldn't pass him. And um, suddenly I started singing. And I started matching my sound with the sound of the truck. And as I did that, I found myself moving into the vibrational field of the truck. And I just kept singing and I'm feeding love into the truck. <laughs> and what began to happen is I was neutralizing the sound. I was neutralizing that harmful effect. And uh, it, it was my first conscious experience that I can think of, of neutralizing what felt like a very, um, it wasn't all ha so harmful as it was just really irritating. And yeah, so 
So that's the experience of the trial. So what's, what's interesting to me, the thing that, that really I think of initially is you have a beautiful voice. I don't feel that I have a beautiful voice. So I wouldn't think to sing in those situations. So what, what do you say to people that are like, well, you know, I can't sing. Well, it's too late. Uh, you're a song. <laughs> <laughs> if you perceive yourself to exist, you're already singing. And you're singing yourself. It's coming out. It's coming out in so many different levels. And when you begin to sing vocally with, with the voice, then we're able to experience some of the frequency of who you actually are as a person. Now, I have worked with people who, um, who cannot speak, who cannot make sound with their vocal cords. But it's still quite real because then you do what I call it silent sound, but it's not really silent at all. It's, it's no less real when it is coming through um, when it is coming through the heart, when it is coming through the mind, and you can hear the sound uh, within yourself. But the truth is, is every single one, every single one of you on this call, you're a song. Marty, you're singing yourself into existence. You're singing Marty. Olivia, you're singing yourself into existence, and you're singing Olivia. And here's the other thing. I cannot sing you. You have to sing yourself. There's only one of us here, but it's just like a body. My foot cell <laughs> cannot, it could, it might try to sing the cell of my hand that, that creates the song of my hand, but it's a unique, it's a unique song. My foot itself is a unique song. My hand is a unique song. My nose, my eyes, my hair, but put me all together. Put all of you all together. And you create this extraordinary song that you, Leanne, are the song of Leanne. Patty Coleman, you're the song of Patty and Paula and all of you on this, on this call. So when a person comes to me and says, I can't sing, and I say, it's too late, you're already singing. <laughs> so does that help? <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's 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 such a beautiful notion to you know to to realize that we're all sound and we're all playing our song amongst yeah. that one oneness, right? That we're yeah, all exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah, the um, and we'll do this a little bit later in our time together because there's so much we could do together. And I don't want to forget to say this, but I'm actually going to be doing a course on sound. It's going to um, come through the Interstellar University, which is part of the Interstellar Community Foundation that Edgar Mitchell helped us, helped us find, found. Um, but I'm going to be doing a course on this that's going to take place. We haven't set the exact date yet, so it's probably going to be late summer, early fall. But we'll make sure everybody who's interested gets the information on that. Uh, and there's where we'll be able to go into much more detail of, of what we I, what I'm talking about right now. Um, and it will be an experiential workshop, an experiential course. Um, yeah, so just wanted to put that little piece out there. Yeah. So I'm it, curious, um, it, can you share with us what happened in Hawaii back a couple mm, days ago? Yeah, that, that was a powerful, powerful experience. It happened in the late 90s. And I was invited to come to Hawaii and teach a conference of around 800 people how to sing in the way that we're going to be singing a little bit later in the, um, in the session tonight. Uh, but singing spontaneously, no words, uh, only the sounds, and usually they are vowel sounds, ah, a, e, o, u, because the vowel sounds pronounced in this way are the fundamental frequencies to all the languages that we know have existed and all that are in existence now. Um, so 
I was invited to come and teach this conference how to sing in this way because the purpose of this conference was to um, um, make contact with the whales. And um, so I, I came in, I, I taught the conference how to do this in, in, on my first night there. And the next day, we all go out onto this big ship that's going to a part of the water where the big, um, um, the big whales, the beautiful whales are giving birth. And we, it, that happens apparently in an area of the water that there's a crater underneath it. So the water's a little bit warmer there. So the whales go in and they have their babies there. So the ship, just went to the edge. We weren't going to go in and disturb at all the uh, the mothers getting ready to give birth. So we went in and, and to the edge of, of the water, and um, there was a wonderful gentleman that was on board that had written uh, some songs, and he was teaching other people how to sing these songs. And so people were singing the songs, and it was beautiful. It really was. So, but then the head of the conference comes in over the paging system and said, let's sing the way that I had taught them the night before. And so I began to sing. And one by one, you had several, all these hundreds of people beginning to create a song, everyone singing themselves, everyone singing a spontaneous song, not being in a place of thinking, just simply being in that heart space, creating this sound. What well, you had this massive sound then, it was like a symphony uh, beginning to move across the water. And what happened were these whales began to surface. They began to come to the surface and we could see them all over the place that they were coming to the surface. It was like they're responding to the song that was coming across the water. And we sang, and these songs, by the way, never last very long. They only last one or two minutes. And so the whole group, it's, it was an intuitive ending. We all began to end the song. What was so cool about that is as we're beginning to end the song, three, three giant um, uh, whales jumped up out of the water and the last thing you saw were the three tails. All the other whales had gone under the water. And the last thing you saw were the three tails slowly disappearing under the water. And it was like a ballet. And I swear, Disney, nobody could have choreographed it any better. And there was just this hush that went over the ship uh, because we realized somehow communication had been made. And I, I asked, I told John about that. He wasn't in Hawaii at the time. And I told him what had happened. And he said, well, the whales are supposedly the record keepers. And maybe what they were actually doing was celebrating the fact that humans were finally getting it. <laughs> and this wasn't about thinking. And this was not about words. This was something so much more expansive and the frequency was so much higher. So that was that was one of the experiences. There was one other experience that happened in Hawaii, but I I I could go on. Hey, you guys, I could go on for another week. Um, but we'll we'll keep this as short as we can tonight. But um, yeah. I, that would just be so amazing. And and absolutely shows us right how everything is connected and mm -hmm. I'm sure that everybody that was singing was it really truly was coming from their heart yeah and we're going to get a chance to do that a little later right yes we are yes wow. we are yeah wow. yeah so and, no go ahead. go ahead ask no ask your question well I'm I'm just a little anxious <laughs> I'm excited and anxious for everybody to experience some of your songs. So I know you have a gift for us with a song. Would now be a good time to do that? Um, sure, we can do that. Yeah, I can do that now. I um, 
I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, um, for those of you who have it or can see it in your upper left-hand corner, um, you've got a, a sign up there that says original sound for musicians. I'm, and it usually is off uh, when you're speaking, but you put it on when you're singing. So I'm going to put mine on and uh, the rest of you can leave yours off for right now. But then when we begin to bring in the group, uh, what we'll do is we'll ask everybody who can to go in and put that um, that particular uh, item up there, put it on. on. Um, that has to do with wave frequencies of either the singing or the speaking, and they are different. Um, so I'll do that right now. So I tell you what, everybody, I'm going to create a song for you. It's a song that's never been sung before. And it is one that's being created as a result of the frequency that's coming in from everybody that is gathered here. And please know that when we do this, the sound also is not only affecting each one of us, it's affecting everything around us. It moves on into the upper atmosphere, it moves on out, it moves below, but this is a very powerful experience to have. It is one of the key ways that I did heal from cancer. And we can talk about that a little bit after I do the song. Um, if that, if you'll help remind me of that, Leanne. But I'll create a song for you right now and we'll see what, it's never been sung before, so I haven't memorized anything. It will not have words. <laughs> it will be primarily the vowel sounds. Again, the fundamental frequencies of all languages of communication on this planet that we know of and those that have been in the past and those that will be coming in the future. So here goes, everybody. He They know it's at the ending of the people. <laughs> so I don't know if that came across or not. I never know what's going to come across in Zoom or not. Yeah. It came across beautifully for me. That's a good thing to know to turn that that on. Yeah. It just that just felt like a blessing. It just felt like you you ushered in a blessing to all of us here. Like I feel different. Well, it was all of us that were actually creating it, which is an interesting thing. Yeah. What's interesting to me, John and I have done concerts all over the world. And um, and we might, I, I can't, I mean, we've been in Israel, for instance. And that part of the world has a very distinctive sound in their music. But there have been a number of times we've been over there where the sound that would come up would be very Native American. 
So I always found that interesting. It wasn't something I'm conjuring up and it's not something I'm trying to make happen. It is what is happening as a result of the vibrational field that is being created by the the people that are present. So I never know what's going to come up. And and that was fun because that felt that I'll just say to everybody on this call, you're really cool. (laughs) And it's fun being able to sing inside that that field with you. Yeah. What was it I had asked you to remind me of? Um, after I did I'm, I'm just curious, when did this start? Like, when did you have this inclination to do this automatic type of singing? Yeah, that's a good question. I The, the truth is, is I probably have been doing it all my life. Uh, but I wasn't conscious of what I was actually doing. Um, I can remember, for instance, when I was in college, I'm 16 years old, I'm in college and I'm playing the piano and I'm singing something by Schumann, right? And and I remember pushing back from the piano and I think, well, he wrote that. By gum, I can do that too. <laughs> so I think that may... And even as a child, I would piddle around on the piano and just make up melodies. But I wasn't really conscious of what I was doing, I don't think, Leanne, until I was probably, probably, I'm going to say my late 30s. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I was very aware, have always been aware of the power of, of what can happen when we create sound. I've always been aware of that, but I didn't really get what was happening, I don't think, till my late 30s, and it wasn't. It wasn't until uh, my late 40s that it was like, it was like I, I remember Beautiful Painted Arrows saying to me when I turned 52, he said, you were programmed not to remember. Now you're gonna start remembering everything. Okay. So maybe truthfully, it was around yeah, late 40s, early 50s that the sounds began to come. And at some point in my early 50s, I did a vision quest. And there, um, for anyone who's ever done a vision quest, who may have actually experienced uh, having a vision um, or a, a very deep dream, you may actually experience other beings. You may experience experience other presences uh, that are there uh, in your within your your space, and that happened with me. And I remember I was being taught how to sing in this way, and I there were no words that were being used. It was an experience of something that I had always known but had forgotten. And my guess is this is true of every single one of us. Uh, We have, the more awake we become, the more we begin to remember what we think we may have forgotten. And this this is not a conscious thing quite often. This is something that comes in a very unconscious way. So, yeah, I... I I never had anybody teach me how to do the spontaneous singing. I do remember Joseph Ryle saying to a group of people that, um, you know, that I would teach people a new way. But what I've learned is this isn't a new way at all. We were, John and I were in Israel, and I had this extraordinary rabbi, a rabbi, who told me that 2,000, more than 2,000 years ago, the priest sang in this way because that's what put them near to God. And the people were not shown how to sing this way. It was only the priest. And, And there's actually a prophecy. He was telling us about a prophecy that had been written into, I think, the Zohar, where teachers would come in the far future that would teach the people how to sing in this way. And I do not presume to think that John and I are the only two on this planet, you know, that are teaching this way. But I do know that this is not a new way. 
this is actually probably the original way of communicating with all life. Yeah. Ancient. I can, I can speak from experience when we were together and I was painting and you were singing and you sang dozens of times, but the last time, if you remember, I, the only way I can describe it is it was an out of body experience. It was your, that song. It felt like that song was taking us into this universal, um, just liminal space right 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 and I could, I, I, could, I could hear it in your voice but it was more that I can feel it like it was in every cell in my body yeah 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 really profound and I'm glad you said that about every cell in your body because I go back to the piece of of um saying that the clearing of the hollow bond, the clearing of the self, constantly clearing yourself every day. John and I do it every day. I'll go through, I'll go through my my mind, my heart, and if I'm feeling any anything at all that would be blocking this this higher uh, this higher frequency from coming in or yeah then I have a responsibility to clear it uh, because I cannot walk my talk uh, unless I do that um, if I do that then I am constantly open to receive um, yeah now, and and let me say this very quickly we'll cover this in the course that I'll do um, and I think, and forgive me, it was Olivia, I think it was you or maybe Marty, one of you had brought up the thing around um, the healing. When you are dealing with disease or when you are dealing with a situation where it, you just feel you're caught in it, stuck in it, or somehow you are having difficulty getting beyond it. What is really important is to know that itself is a song. And I'll use my cancer as an example. When I had cancer, I came to the realization that the cancer itself was attempting to tell me something. My job was to listen to it. And um, um, I would... The first cancer is an example. I'd get up at three o'clock every morning because I learned that that's when the cancer cells are the most active. So I'd get up at three o'clock every morning and I would, I would do exercise to bring more oxygen into my body, but I would listen. I was always listening because the cancer, what I realized, the cancer was emitting an energy that was demanding that I pay attention. So what I began to do was make the sound of the cancer. Now, that may sound kind of strange. You think, well, how do you do that? Use your imagination. So sometimes I would make the sound. It may sound something. I don't know how this is going to come across, but I'll, I'll just do it. Sometimes it would come across crazy sounds. And you would think, well, that's not a song. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's the cancer sending out a frequency that that if I wanted to be able to trans um, transmute that, I needed to pay attention. So I let the cancer sing. And then here's the piece that nobody ever teaches you. Nobody taught it to me. I came in, you know, I maybe who knows? Maybe it was the Hathors or the Pleiadians. Who knows? But the higher self, I would let the higher self come back and then begin to sing to the cancer cells. And here, here's this piece around high vibration, low vibration. Because the cancer's busy moving at this lower frequency, you bring in the song of the higher self. Now, I don't care what you call it. You can call it anything, but it's a higher frequency. And you begin to sing. What happens is these two begin to meet up. 
And if, if you let the cancer sing first, then it's able to be quiet enough to hear what is coming in from the higher self. It's a little bit like a child pitching a tantrum. A child that's pitching a tantrum is trying to get your attention. So if you, if you can listen and pay attention and the child knows that you are, then the child can hear what you may, you know, what you may be saying. So I, um, I would do this with the cancer every day, every day. I would, I would let the cancer sing, then I would sing back. The higher self would sing back. And the most, I said I was talking about the first cancer. It's actually the second cancer that's perhaps the most dramatic. That happened uh, two or three years later. And for everybody on this call, this was way back in the 90s. So I'm good and healthy now. But this was way back in the 90s. And that second cancer was quite interesting um, because that's where I experienced the cancer is Godzilla. <laughs> so imagine Godzilla walking down Manhattan and, and roaring and making these crazy big lizard sounds. And that's the sound that the cancer was making. I could hear it. Um, and so every day I would, I would allow that cancer to make it sound when it was done. And it usually only lasts for about a minute. Sometimes it might be longer, but, or it could be shorter, but not much longer than a minute. Once I heard that sound and let the cancer sing, then I would begin to sing the higher, let the higher self come in. And the higher self was coming in like a chorus of angels. Now, that, this is key because this is where your imagination plays a part. Um, I would imagine the higher self being a chorus of angels. It would sing back to Godzilla every day. I'm doing this. 3, 3.30 in the morning. And of course, I learned to do silent sound so I could keep my marriage together. But it, still, <laughs> it was still something that I did every day. What began to happen is, is that the shape of Godzilla began to get smaller. Finally, one day I remember I got up in that early morning hour and I tuned into the cancer, and suddenly what I'm seeing is this beautiful little fluorescent lizard floating in a cloud. And I realized that's Godzilla. That was the cancer, but it was still there, right? And the chorus of angels would come in. They would sing after hearing the little Godzilla sing. And it wasn't long after that before one morning I got up and started to do this exercise. And what I saw was not a lizard at all. I saw this small angel, a little angel. And the little angel began to sing. And the chorus of angels came in. And there was one angel. Again, my imagination, who knows? But there was this one angel that walked out from the chorus of angels and walked over to the little one and said, See, you were one of us all along. Oh, my God. That was the end of the cancer. So, you know, there's power in this, you guys. If you're going through a divorce, if you're going through any kind of a traumatic situation, whatever it is, whatever it is, this let, let the part that's hurting sing, but then always bring in that higher self. And let it begin to sing. And that's where the frequency begins to shift and change and raise. Wow, that's so beautiful. Well, what happened to you? <laughs> well, I'm here. Here, and I don't know. I don't know what's getting, happening. <laughs> and I'm getting newer every day. <laughs> so it really isn't even, it doesn't even sound like you had this really clear intention because an intention's kind of mental. You, you just knew to... To be your higher self is just going to be love. That's right. That's it. That's exactly it. And that there, anytime there's anything out of balance, whether it's within you in your physical body or whether it's in with in your surroundings, whatever it is, there. Remember, I said everything is sound. Wow. Circumstances, 
circumstances are a song. You look at the war in Ukraine, the war itself is a song. And, and you can begin to shift that. Here's another quick story. Do I have time to tell another quick story? I think a quick story, and then I think we should all sing. Okay, we'll, we'll me, sing. Let me, yeah, you guys, let me tell this quick story, and then we'll sing. We'll all sing. Uh, John and I were in Israel. We went. We were in Israel when the second intifada or the second war started. We were there, and uh, we were doing uh, workshops and concerts, um, and providing a place for the people to come and gather where they themselves collectively could begin to raise the frequency of what was occurring in Israel. Um, and um, I remember that one evening we did a work, we, uh, I, I think we did the concert first and the, was it the name? No, we did the workshop first and this woman had gone through the workshop and learned some of what we're talking about right now. The very next day, there was a suicide bombing that had taken place in one of the bigger markets in Israel. And these things are horrendous when uh, you know they when they happen, they're horrendous. And uh, I don't even just use your imagination to figure out what occurred because there were a lot of people there. And there was there was quite a lot of damage done, both to physical bodies and to the surroundings. And uh, that night we were doing a concert and this woman who had been in the workshop the day before was very excited to share what she had done. And what she had done is when she learned about the she learned about the bombing, she went down to that part of town where that market was. And she purposely walked through, slowly walked through the entire area, creating a spontaneous song, just, just creating a spontaneous song that was coming from, from love, the thing about love. And what she began to notice is that the energy that had been full of panic just slowly begin to calm, become more calm. And yeah, there are a lot of stories that we could share with you um, that are like this. But just, you guys, you got power in, in the sound of who you are. Um, and don't ever say to me that you can't sing. Like I say, it's too late. You're already singing. You're here. <laughs> so you want to sing as a group? We're going to. Do you want everybody to take their mics open? Yeah. Is it possible that I can see everybody? Hi, everybody. Now I can see who else here. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but I'm going to put my original, the original sound for musicians. I'm going to put it on on. Um, and here's what I'm going to suggest we do. Um, I'm going to just start singing, singing, singing creating a song. If this is something you've never done before, all you need to do is start with vowel sounds. You can even choose a single vowel sound if you want. But I'm going to tell you right now, there are constant, it's like water, it's like turning on water. There's constant melody moving through each of you constantly. Um, yeah, Olivia, you're constantly singing you. <laughs> Whether you want to or not, you are. You know, Marty, you're constantly singing you uh, because I'm able to perceive you. That's how I know. So all you need to do is just allow the sounds to come. And there's no way you can do this in the wrong way. That's what's so cool. There's no right or wrong to it. It is just simply having the courage to let the sound come. So it's... <clears throat> It may sound chaotic to you at first, but what's the law of chaos? It will find its way to order. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, let's do this and let's let's give ourselves a, a gift. 
So I'm going to start. And uh, as I say, if you've not done this before, and if it's something totally new to you, start out with one or two vowel sounds. Choose anyone you want. And uh, in the course that I'll teach, we'll talk about what each of the vowel sounds mean. But for right now, let's just have fun with it. Um, but I'm going to start singing, and then I'm going to ask John to come in. And here's the thing, is John, I'm going to be singing what's flowing through me. So John, if John goes into that no mind space, that no thinking space, and just allows the sound to come, then what will come from John will be a song that's never been sung before. And because he cannot sing what I'm singing, I'm singing Gene. He's going to be singing John. So your job for everybody here is just trust yourselves and just open up your mouths and just let the sounds come. Be aware that we are a community here. So be conscious that we're all creating a song and you may find that you will begin to go into harmonies, but it will still be unique to you. Okay, this is your song. So is I that know. really confusing or do you have a question? Yes, Leanne, go ahead. I want to say too, people that are watching this right now on Facebook, or if you're watching the recording of this, sing along too, right? Like just sing whenever it is if it's yes. if, if you're home just watching this or if it's three years from now that's right it's all going to become part of the same that's record. right cool that's right that's right and it will affect all of us right now because there is no time there's no past there's no future everything's here right now that's kind of, that's another subject we can do that another time <laughs> so all right i'm putting my um original sound for musicians on to on. I'm going to begin to sing. And John, when you're ready, you come in with yours. And then everyone else that's on this call, I know Patty, you've done it with us a bunch. I know Paula, you've done it with, a, with us a bunch. Um, but you guys just jump in there with your song and we'll see what kind of a gift we have for the world here. All right. Oh, 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 Israel the first time there were about 50 people we were in a home uh, where people had gathered and we were doing a, a potluck dinner and um, uh, 
one of the Israelis when we got through doing this because, you know, because everybody was singing their own song. And to one ear, it may sound, hello, this sounds really chaotic. Not if you're listening closely. And what this person said is, this is what, this is what the Old Testament means when it says, make a joyful voice. Mm. So this is, this is powerful stuff. Oh, which, uh, if you will allow me to tell you, because Leanne, I, I had said I wanted to remember to tell him about a dream that I'd had. Yeah. Yeah. If this is an important dream, I think I actually had three dreams in one week, uh, all of them having to do with, um, you know, I'm not really teaching anybody how to do any of this. You already know how to do it. I'm just helping you to remember, but is helping uh, hundreds of people remember how to do this. And the third dream was the one that really stood out for me because I was brought into the United Nations. And I'm, I'm describing to all the different representatives of all the different countries how to do this. And I, I shared with them, I said, this is not about singing what anybody else is singing. This is about singing what is moving through you right now. And long story short, what I began to hear in the dream was beyond magnificent and the thought that came once this was done is this is what world peace sounds like. Mm. Wow. So I, mm. you know, this, this is powerful stuff and I'm giving all of you a homework assignment is every morning. It's what I do. So I'm going to invite you to do it too. Every morning, create a spontaneous song. If you can go outside and do it, do it because the birds love it. The wind loves it. It can be a very still day. It can be a very quiet day. But you go out and you begin to sing. You will be amazed. The birds will come. The wind will come. And you begin to realize there is no separation. There really is just the one of us here. So I've got so many stories, you guys. But do you want to open it up to question and answer? Or what do you think, Leanne? I think we should. I think everyone's got their cameras on and we can unmute and yeah, let's let's ask whatever questions are coming up for people or comment yeah. about what that experience was like for you singing. Yeah. And I can if I can just say this, I can invite John also. He may think of something that I have forgotten or whatever because he's been with me through all these years going through all these experiences. So John, I'm going to invite you too to jump in there where you think that might be appropriate. So, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I think it would be great if you would use the reaction button down below and raise your hand that way. And then that way we'll put you right up there where Jeannie can see you and go ahead. Mm -hmm. If anyone has any comments or questions. And I apologize, Jeannie. This is Jean. This is such a bashful group, you know. <laughs> I apologize. Why does that feel facetious? <laughs> we we have Olivia. Olivia, yeah. I'll be unbashful. I just want to say, John, thank you for telling me that Venerable Dahani and Jean met back in the nineties because. I did put in the chat synchronistically this year, Venerable is teaching her sound healing. She actually does it in her wisdom class once a month. And one of the things that's wonderful is our annual elders gathering, Native American and youth gathering this year, end of July, our 39th consecutive, by the way, is all about sound and vibration and we're having <laughs> sound healers yeah so i'm so excited because i'm on the i've been part of the planning of this and i've been wanting to do this for years but i'm very <laughs> curious about your course because i've been looking for something that can help me um be able to i used to do sound healing in my own intuitive way in the 80s and I'm very much wanting to get back to it. And what I found when I 
retired from one of my careers, which was academe, um, teaching Feldenkrais-based <laughs> curricula in conservatories and universities and things like that. I found my voice got very strained and I want to get back to that natural healing tone. And it's, I, I, the problem with Zoom is that it distorts everything. So I'm just really excited about hearing more about your course. And so I hope you'll keep us posted or let us know more um, because I've been wanting to heal my voice and I've been listening deeply to see what is the best way to do that so I can bring it back into my healing practice. Beautiful, Olivia, thank you. Um, let me address this first so that I don't forget. I met Dahani back, gee, many Christmas. When was that? It was a very long time ago, and it's when I still had my divorced name. <laughs> So, and I had not yet been blessed with the name of Jean White Eagle, which was given to me by beautiful Painted Arrow, who saw my name in vision. So she wouldn't know me by this name, but she did make an impression on me. Um, yeah, and I was hoping to be in touch with her at some point. Maybe I'll come to you. Maybe you can help with that. Uh, I'd love because to connect you. Um, because yeah. I, I'm very grateful that the way my life has led, I met her in 1978 and I'm now on the board and I'm also, you know, very happy to connect you. That would be wonderful because I have something I want to ask her to do in regards to the Interstellar University, the actual construction of it. Wonderful. Uh, because she is teaching love us. That. Yeah. She so, would, yeah, okay, we'll be in. John, can you make sure you can get, <laughs> get that down? Yeah. So, uh, to the course, um, it's still in development because there's so many directions that I can go with that. Um, the I'm glad that you shared about your voice uh, because that can be a result of many things. I keep getting that what may be important for you right now is to focus on your breathing. Yeah. Uh, because it's the way the breathing is is coming up and activating the, the vocal cords. So I don't know if you support through the diaphragm, but we will we will cover breathing when we do the course because the diaphragmic area. But this is this is the this is the opera singing singer speaking here or the classical singer speaking here because that support is what will then take any pressure off of of what you may be trying to express through through right. your voice. Uh, That's it, the it, thing. Yes. When I had my pretest for my surgery. I found I had an abnormal. Um, cardiac rhythm. And so, and since I had COVID a year ago, I've been feeling shortness of breath. So I would love to follow up with you um, individually and with John. Um, and I sure. I'll, I'll get your information from, because I, I, I don't want to go the usual route without checking out, you know, what's going on in this way. So thank absolutely. You. I yeah. won't take any more time. Thank you. Yeah. But absolutely, let's just make sure we get the contact information for you. And this is for anybody on the call. Um, John and I are available to do private, you know, private sessions, I guess we could call it. Uh, we have focused on the group sessions, but we're finding more and more that there are people as yourself, Olivia, that are coming and saying where you are and what you might need help with. And I'm I'm very willing to do that. And I know John is as well. So, yeah. Cool. Okay, Noelle. What All righty. Well, a couple things. Um, one is I want to know whether you are familiar with uh, uh, Jonathan Goldman. Yes, I know and, Jonathan. Yeah. I don't know him well, but I do know, I do know him, yeah. He, he has a book out that says The Humming Effect, Sound Healing for Health and Happiness. I yes. happen to have it on my shelf. It happens to be unread. So I was wondering, <laughs> is there a difference? 
conference. And okay, I'll give you a little, a little story also. As a kid, I hummed all the time. In oh. fact, you know, we had like the, the baby jars with the food and had the little metal right. cap. I will put that in my mouth and I would sing like all the time. So I actually got a nickname related to that, which I will not divulge. <laughs> uh, anyway. I'll put it in the chat. No, no. <laughs> So anyway, um, is humming different from just like the, the vocalizing, like we were doing the open mouth kind of thing? And, and that's, that's question number one. Question number two is I was trained as a speech language pathologist and uh, Robert Kennedy is gonna be running for office. He has yes. spasmodic dysphonia. So he, uh, he sounds like this. So how do you get, you know, I don't know exactly how he's gonna make that gravitas appearance that politicians need to uh to win an election but um i don't know if you've ever worked with anyone with voice disorders and so that's, yes. my, two, that's my two parter sorry guys yeah okay but the first part uh the hum everybody do a hum just just and and rather than mm, rather than that drop your jaw if you can and just go I'll, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this on quickly. Mm, all right. Then allow your lips to just part. Notice the sound that comes out. Just I'll, I'll give an example. It's not an E sound, is it? It's not an O sound. Is it? What sound is it? Uh, oh. Um. Oh. Uh, Unless you're manipulating it. Uh, it uh, Unless you're the natural sound. position of the tongue. Yeah. Well, yeah. But if you're just doing what is is your normal hum or whatever, it's actually the sound of ah. You've just closed the lips down, right? The sound of awe, I, I won't go into detail on this right now. We will just talk about it when we do the, um, uh, the course. The sound of awe is the sound of the east. It's where the sun comes up. It's the sound of the mental. It's the sound of new beginnings. It's the sound of the dawn. But that is awe. Um, that's the sound of awe. But a hum is that. Yeah, I don't know if that, that helps at all, but that's... That's the sound you're making. You just have closed lips, that's all. Um, on the other one, as far as a disorder, a lot of that, if it's physical, then uh, you could actually even handle that the way I handled cancer, uh, because that, it depends on what's causing it. If it's an emotional stress that has caused it, then that emotion, the emotional stress is what needs to be dealt with. If it is an accident or you're born with, with that kind of, of physical um, difference, I'll say, rather than a disorder. If you're born with that kind of a difference, there's information in there for you. And what is really kind of fragile here is, is I have to be careful not to attempt to have someone sound like what normal is because what may be normal for them it may not be for someone else or vice versa so i and i haven't really listened that closely to kennedy at all maybe i need to do that now that you've brought it up yeah it'd be, uh, 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 i think uh, it would give you a lot to think about yeah well we can maybe that maybe yeah. I'll, I'll write that down that may be I'm something we can cover in the course got my vote so far Okay, so now I'm going to lie and say I have one more thing. Before we close <laughs> tonight, I hope you and Liam will share the beautiful painting that you did together and that experience. But I know well, that you have some questions, so now I really am going to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will all do a song with that painting. We call it the song painting. So that's maybe that's a good way that we'll close out, Liam. Do you think it's a good way when we get to that? Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. Okay. All right. How about Flo? Great, my dear. Um, yes. Hi. Um, I appreciate all that you're doing here. 
and you had a few triggers for me good triggers not bad triggers <laughs> my favorite trigger is the imagination and how you're um you're saying you know well it could be my imagination and i have had that a lot and i believe that that's where creation comes from is mm -hmm. our imagination so so that's a good thing you know as a kid it was always like oh barb that's just your imagination you know and i thought it was a bad thing but the older i get the more i realize it's really a very good thing so um i've had some good things come to me from my imagination and i appreciate it and um the sound too um i'm just starting to get back into before the pandemic i took a vibrational sound healing where you place bowls that are have a flatter bottom and you place them on the body and it vibrates all the liquids in your body. So it can help get rid of blockages by just vibrating the liquids in your body. So I'm trying to get back into that. And so I'm looking forward to your course and uh, hoping that I can incorporate some of the, your teachings. So thank Beautiful. you. Thanks, Barb. Um, one of the things, just so that the rest of you know what John and I do, you know, I don't even know how we discovered this, but you guys are probably much smarter than I am and discovered it long before I did. But um, on YouTube, and I think it had to do, John, when you were having your heart uh, surgery, I was looking for a frequency that could help, help John. Uh, I couldn't be with him. Uh, but I knew that the doctors uh, and the nurses would cooperate, and I found a frequency on YouTube. Uh, now we find frequencies for everything. You can go on to YouTube and look up frequency vibrations, and you can find a frequency for anything to help with anything. And they do. Most of them really do help. And I remember when John was, was, um, was in surgery, coming out of surgery, they would play uh, on his phone because we found the frequency on, on his phone and they would play it so that that frequency was feeding into the room and feeding into his body as we were, you know, as he was going through that experience. So there are many ways like that, Barb, is you're bringing up the bowls. Um, yeah, that... These are these are powerful ways to work with sound. Um, they really are, and I'm gonna I'll write that down too. We've this course may be longer than we thought it was going to be. <laughs> so, does anybody else have a question or a comment? Yeah. So. I did have another question. Yeah. Uh, so online again. Okay, so. Uh, Royal Ron Rife, he uh, made the Rife machine back in the 1930s, and all it was was a machine that dialed different frequencies and got rid of cancer cells. Yeah. And, of course, the AMA found out about it. And they, well, I'm not even sure the AMA would have been established then. It may have established it then just to shut him down. But they disgraced him and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And now, you know, the people are making their own rife machines and so it's by my frequency i don't think it has any sound i think it's just by mm -hmm. dialing the frequency that every different disease has a different frequency and so are, right. you, are you familiar with that at all yes i am somewhat i mean not i'm not intimate with it but i am aware of it mm -hmm. yeah um yeah we could go into conversation around some of that as well um but i won't for this particular conversation, I just, again, the, the key piece that nobody ever seems to teach, I've never heard anybody else do it, um, but that key piece has to do with allowing that higher, that higher self to come back in with a song. That puts what's out of balance back into balance. The sound can totally disrupt. I mean, it can it can shake things up. Maybe it's a better way to say that. And um, what you do when you do the higher that higher frequency, you do that higher sound. It begins to bring things back into balance again. And yeah, that's that's um, 
it's it's just an important piece. Like I say, people don't really, I haven't heard anybody really teach that as such. There is a book I want to recommend. Um, and it's a book by, by uh, Beautiful Pain to Daryl, by Joseph Ryle, R-A-E-L, who wrote a, a beautiful book called Sound. And Patty, you're the one who gave us that, uh, our first our first copy of that. We've got several copies of it now, but it's, it's an excellent book, excellent book. And I recommend it, um, for any of you who might be interested. One of these days, it's time for me to start doing a book on sound. I know it. I just think there's so much out in the field and it's good stuff, but you know, I may have to jump into the pool too. And we'll let you know when that happens. <laughs> so Leanne, shall we do this? Yeah. Um, Are there any other questions anybody has? Any other comments before we we sing again? Yeah. We're good. Okay. I'll make yeah. one comment. I know we're gonna yeah. sing we're gonna sing ourselves out, correct? Right. right. If that works for everybody. Yeah. I think it's beautiful. But I just want to invite everyone to next week that uh, we have an amazing speaker, Connie Kaplan. She's written a book, The Invisible Garment, and it's 30 spiritual principles that weave the fabric of human life. And uh, she yeah. has, uh, I don't know how I got such a sought, off, sought after author, but she'll be here with us. I'm really excited about that. How did I get you to, Leanne? <laughs> so anyway, you're all invited back next Thursday. Invited forward. Yes. Uh, before we hop off, Barb, you, I think you had another question, didn't you, or did you? Oh, okay, okay. Maybe I just read it on your face. Maybe that. And was I it. and I and Jean, I'm thinking too that since we're going to be singing and we're going to be kind of going out with the song, if anything does come through for anybody, we would probably want to hear about that, right? Yeah, we do. Um, I'll, I'm going to ask you to just give a brief uh, overview of the painting itself, and I'll put it up on the screen. Um, the Interstellar University, I spoke on that, when was that? Back in whenever it was, March, somewhere in there, April. Um, the Interstellar University project is... Uh, it's, it's quite a large vision uh, because it has to do with raising the frequency of humanity and sustaining that frequency and, and creating an environment so that overt communication can occur uh, between humans and multidimensional beings. And what we discovered with the painting is, uh, as you yourselves may experience, is it acts as a portal and i'm not going to speak any more on that because i want you to cover it leanne if you would um, but what leanne's referring to is some of you may actually get some information uh coming in from from other intelligences and if you do please write it down and please get it to us because we are compiling all of this information it's coming in from many different areas and sources and directions uh, because in that information is um, our is our helpful guidelines as we are manifesting this full interstellar university vision. Um, yeah. So if you do get insights, please write them down and share. Okay. So Leanne, tell the story, and then I'll put the painting up. Yeah, just super quick in a in a as shortest amount of time possible. And also, too, if you have any dreams, something might come up you know, in your thoughts tomorrow, it might not be, you know, as soon as you, you're done with the song. So, um, so the painting in the, in the song was something that, um, Jean and I were, were just, you know, these universal source forces just, just brought us together and, and just following that inclination, we came together and for three days I painted and, and Jean sang, and again, you sang dozens of, of songs and, and and it is a portal to this this vision or this um, mission that the or organization is. It is a portal to because there's no such thing as as 
future or past or anything. Um, these individuals, whether they're humans in not human form, universal form, are the individuals that are going to be using these these structures, these educational centers. And so it's a way for them to to inform us and be all one. And so that's why any information can come through any person and you know with that clear intent that that we we all want to raise a frequency of this not only this planet but find our our highest space in the cosmos so so that's that's the painting and the song thank you Leanne and thank you everybody and thank you Noel and thank you Bob and thank you John and thank you each one of you for being here oh, you're a blessing in my too. life and I know for each other as well so I'm going to put this I'm going to put the painting up um, and just make it as large as you can on your screen yeah, that's about as large as it gets on my screen. Uh, let's hope that that goes off. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yeah, okay. I think it's good. All right. Uh, you're welcome to leave yourselves on mute, but you also can take yourselves off mute. And if you do take yourselves off mute, just do the best that you can to put that, um, uh, put yourself on the original musician sound tag that's up in the left hand corner put it on on and uh and let's begin to sing um and just kind of focus in on the vibration of the painting itself after 49 songs it was 49 spontaneous songs that got created as the frequency flowed out of leanne onto canvas and uh, we have found that, yes, this does something rather amazing. It is a portal. I love you all. I'm going to start singing. <laughs> hey, on oh, hi, hi, hey, oh, hi, hi. for the people. Love you. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. Thank you so much. Heartfelt <laughs> thanks to all of you, but that was amazing. Mm. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, How beautiful. Great Thank night. You. Thank you. Love Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. See you next week.